Hello everyone, it's Christine here and I am back to share the work I'm going to do for the next prompt for Roxy's Journal of Stitchery, which is botanical. So I absolutely love botanical things. I love flowers, I love birds, I love animals. Um, so there are many, many ideas swirling around, but I thought what I'm going to do is just start getting some things down onto my base. So if you haven't seen previous videos, I'm using um, this blanket base, which was the blanket that traveled out with my partner's mum from Budapest after the war. And so I've then overlaid it um, with an old lace tablecloth, um, which I've just um, stitched down at various points throughout, as you can see, just kind of tacking it tacking it down because then it's going to have lots layered over the top and then this was the monogram that was already on the piece and I've um, outlined it with a piece of trim um, in a heart shape and I've been doing lots of lovely um, stitching down again really fitting in well with the botanical theme so I'll have plenty of scope to keep um, stitching around I'm using this lovely variegated thread um, from I think it's Aurifil yeah Aurifil um, and it's got greens um, of various colors and the, this beautiful burgundy in it so it works really great for I can just use a single bit of thread and then jump around and I can get the whole of um, yeah the leaves and the grapes stitched down and I'm also thinking I'd like to do um, some thread painting of the bird. So whether we get to that today or maybe in a separate episode. But what I wanted to start to do was to start to move across um, the piece and to start to lay down some transitioning elements and then um, yeah, get some more botanical things down. So I dived into my lace box and I found this gorgeous piece of lace and what I've done um, it had some other random little edgy bits on where it was like partially um, cut off and so I've just um, chopped around so I've got an outline where everything is kind of naturally ending as it would on a plant I don't mind that I've got a raggedy edge over here because I'm probably going to then be um, putting things over the top so I'll keep those little scraps and I'm thinking that I'm going to lay this piece. And this piece um, I got out, I think this piece was out of the laces I got. Oh no, I think this it might be actually a vintage piece of lace, but I've tea dyed it and it just took on the most beautiful, I'm hoping the color's sort of showing it's like a soft golden um, color. And so I think I'll arrange it so that it's just overlapping down the bottom and then just, um, sort of meandering its way onto onto this piece and it's good because I won't um, I won't go over I'll be going a little bit over those um, grapes that I stitched down there but you'll still be able to feel them underneath so that's not a huge problem and it then just means I don't need to don't need to stitch the things under here so yeah I think it's important that I start stitching things down otherwise I'll get to the end of this project and um, I won't have actually um, got much stitched in place then the other thing I want to bring into it um, is some of, I'll just get that out of the way for a moment, some of this gorgeous fabric that I got from an op shop in Melakuta when I was on holidays earlier this year. It is so, so lovely. Um, a beautiful printed um, linen with these just gorgeous flower designs um, on it and fruits and berries. Now, I'm not really going for the blue in my piece, but I'm definitely going for the um, burgundy through to the sort of, yeah, lighter lighter burgundies, the greens, not the blues of the flowers. So I'd have to do some, some thread painting, but I really want to, I think after I've got this piece of um, lace, I then want to have a flower coming in um, down here. And I was thinking if I can find a piece, even a piece um, like this that um, can just sit down and probably won't be that because that's right in the middle I'll have a look what's at the ends but something that can just sort of be coming up from the base it doesn't even have to be the whole flower necessarily although I have lots of this because I ended up getting one and unraveling it all it was all gathered up um, and by the time I unraveled it it was a huge piece of fabric and then I went back to the op shop and got the the next one I don't know if it has the name of the design on here Oh, there we are. 
It's the Kesslers for Concord Fabrics Inc. So yeah, really, really lovely. So let's take a look at the ends because it would be good to, good to take from an end piece. So there's, just checking what you can see, there's this one down here, which I could, I could take that. Still got the little thready bits. So we could like cut around there. I'd have to stitch over this one with more sort of burgundy colors, I think, um, which is fine when you're thread painting. And then we could come down here, down there, and down to there. So that could be quite lovely. How would that look in terms of color scheme? So again, I'm gonna fussy cut out around so the blues will be will be gone. That would look work quite well, I think, in terms of morphing across. It's got the more sort of tanny, tanny colors, the greens. Um, the reds so that's a definite definite possibility for that one and I'd get yeah quite a bit of um, thread painting that I could do so that's that end let's jump down and have a look at what is it at the other end of the piece so don't really that's got more of the blackberries which I probably don't need and then this one, again, got the nice flower, another nice flower. I only like two flowers. I think I'm going to, I think I'll go. I think I'll go with this one. So we might, let's get stuck in. Otherwise, I'll just keep pondering all the gorgeous things and not actually get anything down on my, down on my piece. So, um, actually... I might just keep, I quite like um, selvage pieces, in fact. Do I want to actually just flick it when I stitch it? Do I want to just pop that under? Maybe I'll do that actually. I'll leave the selvage on. And so I will pop up here. And then I'll just cut broadly around. Leave a bit of distance. And then just come up here. Using my good fabric scissors that make a really nice clean cut. Okay, we'll pop that behind me. I always end up with a huge pile of fabrics behind me when I've been playing around. And as you can see, because it was a curtain, it's still got some little threads and things in it. So I'll just clean those out. I'll get my needle and just pull out this little bit of thread that's hanging out down here. That looks like it was probably part of the original um, paint, paint lot. Just some little, probably ones that were holding the, holding the pleat in part, but I took it all apart and then washed it. So it's, um, yeah. And I was just so impressed with the quantum when it was all um, pleated up. It didn't look like a huge, huge amount, but then once it was all um, undone, it was it was quite huge. So, just thinking. So if we're going to pop that down here, I think I'll just um, come up from. Sorry, you probably can't see that. I'll just come up around here. I think. And what I'm thinking is I'll just, once it's on the piece, I'll do stitches over the edge so um, of all of it. So it will actually, um, won't fray with part of the, the thread painting process that I'm going to do. But I might for the time being even just put a bit of Yoohoo glue on the edges when I'm um, attaching it down to the fabric. And I find that holds it quite well as well. We'll see how we go. Now, just checking, I am filming and I've got the camera up the right way. So, I hope you're having a great day as you're watching this. Hopefully, you're doing some lovely, lovely stitching. It's Sunday here when I'm filming this. Beautiful sunny day. I've actually had to close the blinds because it was too much gorgeous sunshine coming in on my desk, which Normally I don't mind, but if I'm filming it just is a bit, bit less than ideal. But it's beautiful and warm upstairs. 
about a 15 degree day I think today in Melbourne so not super hot outside but just a lovely lovely temperature with the sun shining so yeah I think the Yoohoo glue will be helpful just to stop any any fraying I know some of you use fray check and other things I just like my my good old Yoohoo glue because I find I can stitch through it um, no problem and I can easily remove it if I need to remove it but it just helps to one, avoid having to have pins in my piece when I put it down. Um, and two, just, yeah, helps to, helps to stabilise and catch. I know I could be using a smaller pair of scissors, but I quite like the clean cut that these ones give. it's not too tedious watching me cut around I just try and do sort of yeah where I can I do a more sort of continuous cut I'm um, obviously on the curves you have to kind of angle it angle it around I'll take that bit of stem off. Know for others in other parts of the world it's starting to cool down now friends in the UK and Italy although I think yeah friends in Italy have had a very hot hot summer so probably enjoying the cooler cooler climbs So nice to be doing some lovely stitching because as I've mentioned I think in my stitch along um, well I know in my stitch along videos um, it's just been a very very busy time at work so I haven't had my normal amount of stitching time in the evenings and even on the weekends I've just been so exhausted so I've got the energy and I've got the time to stitch now and it is lovely very happy. Alex is happily watching the Bathurst car race on TV or the rally. I'm not sure what it's called. So I think he said that will sort of run till five o'clock or something. Then I'm thinking I'll make some nice ratatouille for dinner with eggplants and zucchinis, tomato, onion. Might make some polenta to go with it, not sure. And some, I think we've got some sausages to have. Hopefully I'm staying on camera better. Eventually we'll get round. <laughs> I have actually missed doing these longer, longer sort of videos. Just pop it on and do some, do some creating. 
I do enjoy doing my stitch along videos too. They're a lot more shorter, shorter format. But I just love the chats that we have with our little stitchy community that join me for the when the videos premiere. So because I've already recorded the videos, I can join in the chat and catch up with everyone's lives. If you do want to add to your stitch repertoire, all sorts of brand brand new to most of us stitches. Um, yeah, really interesting just the world of stitches. You kind of get into your your set number of stitches and then yeah, kind of forget that you can be learning learning new ones. So it's been just really great to extend extend my repertoire. I wouldn't say I'm um, the most immaculate stitcher, but I do it in a nice sort of, yeah, nice slow pace, explaining what I'm doing, sharing the things that go well and the things that don't go well. So it's not um, sort of saying, oh, here's a, here's a perfect stitcher and it's not intimidating. It's just, yeah, here's me having a go at doing a new stitch or maybe returning to an old favorite stitch, but doing it in a, a different way or even just, yeah, just following the technique um, that's suggested in the book that we're following along with the A to Z of embroidery stitches. So save that little, those little pieces beside me. Good in other little slow stitches. And I might then just get rid of the, the fluffy bits, one of my favourite little tools to have on the on the desk. I've actually just bought one um, from or ordered from Kmart, one that just um, uses water to refresh it, so you don't have to. It's not a disposable, disposable one. So what I am thinking is like that, and then I think yeah, I think that will work quite nicely. We can then have this. Might have that come down a bit further. Have this just a smidge over. And then I was wondering if I want to bring maybe another botanical lace. This is another one that's just got beautiful, beautiful um, botanical features on it. Whether I want to. That might be nice to have it sort of yeah coming coming up but then with another another bit that kind of melds melds in with similar colors um, to that piece so yeah I think that could be that could be very good indeed and so it's just going to be about which piece I want to use or do I want it to run along run along this way And in fact, do I want to actually lay it under the other piece? Again, it's just this lovely layering that this is giving. It's just, yeah, sort of giving you that real sense of, yeah, history imbued in the piece. Now I'm probably starting to go off, off screen down there, aren't I? But what I was thinking, now I might just need to drag this down a smidge. Oops, and hopefully not knock over a tin at the end of my table. Um, just check what you can see. I think you can see that. Just move my, do a bit of reorganising to make a bit more space. Move it up a smidge. Yeah, I think that could be lovely. And yeah, as I mentioned, I'll get rid of the blues. Um, but I think that will be a nice transitioning across across the piece down here. Um, I'm just wondering, I might take this little bit of leaf off. I don't think it necessarily needs that. I might just keep it so that it's like the petals around here. I think I prefer that and then yeah eventually I might put a stem back across there and I'm wondering if I might take this extra little petal off I think I will take that off yeah 
right, so I think first step will be to um, get these laces down. So, probably need to add a few pins and then I'll try and get rid of the pins as quickly as I possibly can. And whether I do just want to over, I might just overlap the lace a smidge over the side as well. I'm thinking this will um, hang along the back of the couch we've got in the upstairs room as you come up the stairs. The couch has a back to the sort of the area that you enter into off the off the top of the stairwell. So I thought it'd be a lovely, lovely thing to have and put all my favourite, well not all of them, I won't be able to fit all my favourite pieces onto it, but put many of my favourite, favourite treasures and get to enjoy looking at them. Just move my threads down. Just give myself a bit more room at this end. So I can't wait to see what everyone else is doing for the botanical prompt. So many options. Even though we did get down the garden path, um, I don't think any of us have tired of botanicals. So again with this piece I'll probably just do um, yeah just some tacking down the stitches just enough to kind of get it in place and then be able to place um, the flower piece over over the top so that's probably enough to start so I will grab out my threads just having a look there my other container of threads are oh, where did I put them Oh, there they are. So I like using these little, um, they would have originally been cosmetic cases. And this is a vintage Silco cotton in a biscuit, which is a very handy colour. I think it'll be the perfect colour for this. So we'll get a good length of that. And we'll get stitching down. Tie a knot. Oops. Knot slid right off. Sometimes they just don't don't hold. Have to hold on to. Oh, it's too it's too silky this thread the second knot just slid right off okay. right well let's start at this end let's start down the bottom we're going to have our other lace over it anyway so end through just put a couple of little stitches in to just start off and make sure my thread is holding nicely and then I think I'll just work my way up here but I can do nice um, long stitches at the back because as I say all of this is all going to end up with so many um, sort of layers of stitching and then I'll be doing decorative stitching as well and adding little little features in whether it's buttons or little mo um, lace motifs or other things I just want to have a real richness of of items on this piece I know some people are leaving gaps between I think I really want to um, yeah have have a lot of a lot of things I love looking at those those pieces where there's just yeah lots of lots of elements that's why I'm so happy to have a big blanket because I can have some larger format pieces that I create and then also just have some some smaller ones got so many ideas of things to add and I'm just happy now I'm getting a bit of time to to start adding and I was kind of thinking do I need to wait till the end and um, know what everything is but I thought no I'm just going to start stitching things down because I've got things that I want to add and I can work it out as I go and really if something um, 
I didn't want something at the very end, I can definitely, definitely move it. So I can just take the stitches out. Nothing is permanent. This blanket is a lovely base because it keeps it really stable and it's not hard to not hard to stitch through which is good so we'll just continue our way across the top just putting in little little nibble stitches on the front and then longer stitches on the back just to carry us across you can see up there. I don't know if you can see that far. Probably only just. But yeah, main thing is just to get to a point that you don't have to have all your pins in there. Just take my thread. I'm probably going off camera over here, so I'll just jig it down a little bit down to hopefully where you can see down here. But I probably don't need to go all the way down as long as there's enough holding it in place there. And I'll just come down the piece down here. And then we'll do a few stitches along the, the bottom so that we know that that is all held in place. Oops, just managed to pull my needle out. But yeah, this was another piece of um, lace that I tea dyed just ever so lightly, just a sort of a half hour um, tea dye because I don't like the really dark um, and I find yeah someone was saying they struggle with getting an even tone but I find if I just do a shorter shorter tea dye and I think it also is probably better for the fabric because I have read that um, tea dyed fabric over time will sort of gradually um, not erode um, but the tannins in the tea um, they do gradually sort of eat away at the fabric so I imagine the least, less tannins you're using, the better it is. So I just managed to unthread my needle right where I want to be tying off, but I think that will be fine. Um, and so let's just go along the bottom as well, tacking it down. See if I can tie the knot without letting it slide right off. Slidly, slidely. Keep tight on it. Yep, there we go. Didn't slide off that time. Okay, so we'll work our way along from this end. Oops, I'll just drag over here so that um, you can hopefully see. Oops, wants to come right through. Again, just put a few stitches in at the start just to make sure your thread is properly anchored. And then I may yet sort of had, add further laces to the base um, of this, but I figured I'd with this lace piece just um, tuck it under so it gets properly, properly secured. By the time I put the other lace over the top, there's going to be four layers. The blanket, the lace tablecloth, this piece of lace, and then the other decorative lace. And then once the flower's over, even more. Let's put these back in the pin cushion as I go. I 
just love getting the pins out of the work. Makes me very happy when I can get to that that point. I can take these ones out actually because they've been they've been done. Take that one out. Look where I came down, so I'll just go across to here or wherever my thread runs out, I guess. Hopefully, you can see. And again, I can always come back and add more stitches. Um, I might do more sort of canther style stitching across some areas or seed stitching, but first, I'll sort of get my elements down and then work out what else I need because I could put a whole lot of canther stitching in that might not be actually needed if I'm then putting something over the over the top. As you can see there, like if you sort of stitch away, you don't then know what you're going to be kind of overlaying with it. So you don't want to do all your stitching and then cover it up or not be able to add something that you want to add um, because you're like, oh, I've already already stitched that area. off down here. So I've got enough thread left I think. So I'll bring it back on camera. I'm just working my way way down here. Just doing short stitches on the top and then long stitches on the back. It's just about getting your fabrics anchored tacked in place and probably even let me just drag it a smidge more across I can probably just go I've got enough thread to be able to go up a bit further let's just make sure it's sitting flat though I've got a little gap at the end of my table where I can hang it, hang it down. Just want to make sure it's sitting, sitting flat before tacking it down. Ouch. Try not to poke yourself with your needle. that off at the back. As you can see the needle just passes beautifully through this this blanket. Okay so we can then get this back on screen. can work out where we're going to put this. Now, let's make sure I've got it up the right way. I was looking at it going, hmm, is that the right way? No, it is not. So my needle's gone down there. So I might even just cut that little bit away. I think I probably want it about like that. So I'll come back and stitch this down afterwards. I'll just get it positioned and pinned and then we can at least um, start work on the thread painting, I think, because that will be more exciting to watch. But at least you've seen a bit of the tacking down action and the thinking behind that. So here I'm just bringing it so it sort of comes just up to here. I've just pushed it back a little bit from my little grapes down here. 
And yeah, really glad I put that other lace underneath. I think it now just migrates beautifully across the piece. And I love how you can just see the, the multitude of, of layers of um, lace through it. It's a lot of fun. And given we've had that lace prompt, um, and I've looked at all my laces but haven't really put much down beyond the, the lace tablecloth, which I suppose is enough of a... Um, a response to the prompt in and of itself, but I do have so many laces I do want to profile through this project. So that's beautiful. And then, oops, sorry, just poked something with my, poked a bowl with my hand. And so then this one, it's just about working out where do we want to position it. Don't want to um, miss out on too much of my. But what I might do is I might cut this piece because I can definitely use some of this lovely lace in some other other projects. So I might take this one. So this is what I did on the other side, just to sort of take out the elements. Um, and just keep them because they will be lovely, lovely embellishments. And then, yeah, this will. So that can go under there. And then this could go. Or do we want it to go a little bit further over? Or do you want to tuck it? I tuck it under at all that's the other question what do you want in the I think I want this in the because it's going to be thread painted so it is going to look really lovely I think I will move it over so that it's not so that it's just kind of touching with with this piece here I think so what I'm going to do is I'll grab the back of my book because this is one of those covers you can wipe down and I will get my get rid of the thread and this is where I'm going to use my Yoohoo glue just to stabilize um, the edges of it might fray a few of them in the process but then once whatever's left will be held a bit more Normally, if you were sticking it down like onto a cotton or something, um, it's going to stick really well. Um, this will be going onto the lace, so it'll be interesting to see how it how it goes. Just get rid of those little gluey, gluey bits. Put that back up on my rack, and I just need to get my little. I had a little rag before. I'm just trying to look where that's gone um, to use on my hands. thinking well, hopefully you can see what I'm seeing and I might just take this up but I think that will be that will be pretty good, I think. And it has at least um, adhered to that that top top layer of um, of lace. And even if there are just some little bits, just kind of fraying off here and there, I think that's the main one that just sort of frayed a little bit. Perfect. And then we can start to think about um, the colors that we want to use so I've got this lovely burgundy that I think will be really nice um, on these 
flowers and so that's an Appleton wool and I've got lots of that and then I've got some paler paler yellows I might use my little quilt clips um, I saw those a moment ago on one of my things of threads where are they hiding now oh there they are Keep them on the inside pocket here and they can be handy just to clip clip on if you've folded something over and you want it to sort of hold its hold its fold so we might start down here on um, this this flower and I can even so I need this colour for the darker and then I need a sort of a more pinky, pinky colour. I think that will still be okay. I don't think it will go totally out of, get yeah, out of tone. So I think that will be good. And then I need some little flecks of yellow. So I've got this one or I've got the more sort of pale yellow, but the more pale yellow might be good over here. So I might use these little flicks. And then there's a little bit of green, but I'm not sure whether I'll, I'll keep that in the pattern. So I might start um with the purple and i'm just having a look at what needle i want to use got the one i was using before which i think might be a chenille needle i'll just tie the knot here so yeah, the Appleton wools, they're beautiful, beautiful soft. These are all just vintage ones that I got from Purveyor of Reclaimed Textiles here in Melbourne. So I might actually do a split stitch style around the outside because it does give you a nice based kind of um, stitch over and it will also just help to um, look after these edgy pieces I think Oops. so normally if I've used the Yoohoo I do, do let it just um, dry for a short time before I sort of yeah stitch in the area but um, I don't find it clags up my needle or anything but it is just a good tip to let it let it dry a smidge so with the split stitch, I'm just popping up through, um, halfway through where the last stitch stitch was. So in the sort of middle of it and then halfway through. And then I'm just sort of following around the outside of the, um, where the raw edge is. And this will just give us an edge that we can then stitch over the top of. Um, and it gives you a nice sort of raised effect as well. Something we were doing recently in our stitch along, so good to be applying a little a little tip. So thread painting always takes a long time, but I'll start us off, and then whether we come back and do some more together, or whether I go away and do some and then yeah sort of report back with some more installments but I do want to come back at some point and do the painting of the bird as well as part of this botanical prompt I'm lucky to have the day off tomorrow because work has been so busy got some time in lieu off the boss said you well and truly deserve it so I thought yep won't say no do need to recharge the battery so you can keep on keep on keeping on like the energizer bunny over here out of the way but yeah I do like these um, clips these quilt clips because they they're not prickly like like pink pins um, but they do hold edges really well I keep an eye out on the sewing layer online op shop here in Australia and yeah I've, that's where all my um, quilt pins they quilt clips have come from and they have good prices for ones that look that, like they look like they haven't been opened usually they're just brand new in their packets so 
probably people have bought them, not used them, and then donated them to the to the op shop. And I'd much rather use something that can be can be repurposed and saved from landfill. Right up my alley. Let's just make sure I'm not getting a knot on the back. Nope. I'm going through the, um, as you can see, I'm going through the layer of where it was folded over and then the um, the various laces, etc. And then just taking care to always pop up in the, the previous stitch, halfway, about halfway along. Doesn't have to be precise because we are going to be going to be stitching over. We're just getting the outline at the moment. And you don't have to do really close stitches. You can space them. You can do longer, sort of longer ones. I'm just sort of following the shape and yeah, making them as long as I can. I'm turning the corner then they might have to be a bit shorter hopefully you can see enough I didn't want to come in really close and then not have this piece on camera because it is a it is a big format piece Make sure I don't go for longer than an hour because otherwise it just gets ridiculous trying to get YouTube to upload it and it's too long to make you wait as, watch as well. But I am enjoying just being able to natter away even though I don't have exciting, exciting things to tell you. We did have a lovely um, birthday lunch yesterday for Max um, with Betty and Silvano so that was beautiful. So nice seeing Travis um, with the cat at Betty and Silvano's place, Mimi, Mimi Cat. They've become the best of mates, which is lovely. At one point, Travis was in the, the dining room with us and um, we'd closed the little sliding door to the, the kitchen area. Um, and Mimi was coming up and, and looking through it and trying to get Travis to come over and play with her. <laughs> Which is very cute because I think when we first took Travis over to meet Mimi, um, yeah, I think she was sort of thinking, what have you brought? What is this creature? This annoying puppy. But now they've become firm friends, which is lovely. So as you can see, the um, yeah, just that little bit of Yoohoo glue just helps to hold hold the piece in place, and I haven't had to put pins into it, which is just making me very very happy. Just want to make sure I am catching the edge there, though. So I might just go back and put another stitch in from down here. So the Appleton wool is a really nice fine wool, not like a not like an actual knitting knitting wool, which is thicker in general. It can be quite expensive, so it is good if you can find a source like the purveyor of reclaimed textiles or something that has a reasonably priced. I think Susanna of Vintage Blend Studios, I think she's got some Appleton wool. I don't know if it's the thin stuff or the, the thicker variety of it. Um, but she, yeah, got a, I think an entire sort of like shops sell out supplies. So I think she's put them into some lovely, lovely packs. I've actually got to do a bit of an inventory and work out what I do actually need. I got some more recently that I've yet to pick up from. Melanie, purveyor of reclaimed textiles. But I 
definitely need this sort of burgundy colour, but I've got a really good um, hank of that. And they were all pre-cut into these lengths, which I guess is the sort of good length to do. You don't want to have too much of a length with the wools. Um, it's like when you're working with metallics, you don't want a long length because it does get a bit of wear and tear from the, the process of stitching through the fabric. It's lovely to use for, for thread painting. It's lovely and textural. So I'm going to have to think, um, yeah, what colour I use where the blue is in this design because yeah, I definitely don't want the don't want the blue. So I think I might use a sort of a purpley burgundy. that's a good thing about thread painting you can totally change the color of what it is that you're you're working on really happy to be adding a bit of this um, found fabric because I just adored it when I saw it I was like that is so beautiful and I've been planning to make a like a project bag out of it haven't done that yet so at least I'll have something that is featuring it it should be lovely Okay, so what I will do now is I might start just, um, actually no, I'll, I'll continue down here so I've got this edge piece because that will be helpful to have the edge to, to stitch. I was thinking I'll start doing the actual stitching in, but I might just continue around the, the full perimeter. Try and make sure I'm staying on camera. As you can see, it's not a fast process, process slow stitch, but it is a relaxing process. And it's a rewarding process, I think. To know that you've created this with your, with your hands and your imagination. I just hope everyone who creates things has, um, yeah, people that will um, continue to enjoy looking at them over over years to come. I figure, given they're sort of yeah um, stitched things from the from long times ago that are still around today, like the ones that lovely um, Rachel from Roxy Creations yeah finds in her markets over initially. Um, Things can, fabrics and textiles, they can, they can last. Yeah, I'm not sure what sort of um, reduction in lifespan the, the tea dyeing actually has. I just read somewhere that it does, does over time. Each way, I think, because it's like acidic, I believe. We don't even know what's in some of our fabrics anyway, um, in terms of their longevity. I'm sure, a lot of the fast fashion today, they wouldn't even um, care how long they last because they're just expecting people to buy it and then throw it away, which I think is very sad. Again, much prefer to pick things up from op shops if I can because you're giving a life to another piece of clothing that otherwise wouldn't and often much better quality as well than what you can get as fast fashion. Okay, so that's that bit done. I'm just going to stand up and see that yes you can see. Um, so we can probably now start doing um, some stitching and I will start with the darker purple. You can do sort of do it in whatever order you want and you can always come back and sort of add stitches as well as you go. At the end you can kind of look at it and if you think you need to kind of add some 
extra extra stitches into an area where you've already stitched you can absolutely do that you can just keep layering it layering it up so I'll just get started on this but we are getting to that sort of hour hour mark so um, I might start up here actually so I'm just going to do some long and short um, stitches and I'm going to just take myself over just over the outside of the um, where I've done the split stitch and then I'm going to pop up next to that to save my thread I'm not going to go all the way back to where my um, long stitch started and then I'll come down and do a shorter stitch and then again I'll just pop up near to where that is and do a longer stitch and taking my needle just to the outside of where my split stitch is and that gives you just a really nice even border now I'll leave that area because that's pink and then yellows and then I'll come down here or well, actually probably better to come over here because we're closer to this area so again if you're wanting to save your thread which should be an objective um, particularly if you're using specialty specialty threads um, is to always think where's the next place I can pop um, that's close to it so that you use the minimal thread on the back where you don't see it Just a longer stitch here. So I'm just really following the design at the moment. Now you don't have to, you can add your own design through the, the thread painting process. But if you want very relaxing um, stitching, it is fabulous. To, it's like a stitch by numbers almost. Um, it's like a paint by numbers sort of thing. Very, very relaxing to just let your, let your thread guide you. I was just checking I didn't have a knot on the back because I just felt a bit of bit of pull but I think it was just where it was going through multiple layers I'll do a longer stitch here and because all the stitches are going to sort of go over the top of each other or next to each other um, longer stitches are okay they'll kind of end up being held down anyway with the other stitches being added so when you are doing the longer and shorter stitches you can actually cover quite a bit of area um, quite quickly and because as I say you're not having to think too much about where you're placing your stitches because you're following the coloration that the fabric designer had in mind so that works quite well And then yeah, next up I'll come in with the, the pinks in between and then I'll come in with the yellows um, and just keep working my way around the flower doing doing that. Oops, I think it's trying to, not sure, might have pulled something through from the back. What have we done? That might be the point where I say, where I call it, call it quits for today. It'd be nice if I could actually get it through without it catching. No, I think we're into, oh no, there we go. It's through, but I won't tempt faint any, any longer. Um, so that's, that's just the start of the thread painting. But as I mentioned, I'll just keep going around. But yeah, the, um, doing the split stitch around the edge of the piece just gives you a really good base um, on which to work. And that's just going to be yeah, really lovely having it graduating across from this piece, across through the lace, the other lace behind it, and then we'll be able to bring things down um, and into it but I think the colors are going to work beautifully once this um, piece is yeah colored up another another color so thanks so much for watching and I will see you soon to um, continue working on it probably to do some more work on this and um, let's also um, stitch our bird and by then I will have stitched down this piece as well so to get rid of those those pins see you soon and thanks for watching take care everyone bye